Okay, let's have a look at our Photography BB Fragmented Action. Now this effect was born out of a personal need for having a sort of shattered glass type of effect that I was looking to create using photographs of my daughter playing hockey. Now, before you run our fragmented action, it does make use of some of our new custom Photography BB brushes. So if you haven't installed the included brush pack that comes with this action, do that now and be sure to set your brush opacity to 100%. You can do this quickly by pressing B to activate the brush tool and then zero to set the opacity to 100%. So now I'm going to use this image here actually and let's begin. So open up your actions panel and toggle open the fragmented action set. And you'll see here that there are three steps to the action. So click on step one, select main subject and click play at the bottom of the actions panel. And like many of our actions, our first step here is to make a selection of our main subject. So the pop-up dialog tells us to now paint over the main subject. So let's now click stop to do this and we can close the actions panel out of the way too. Now there are a couple ways to do this. So you can use the brush which is automatically selected for you by default and simply paint over the main subject, making sure to be as accurate as possible. Now you'll notice that you're painting on the main focus area layer, which allows you to use the eraser tool to erase your brushing if you make any mistakes. Now alternatively, I like to select my subject using the quick selection tool. So to use this method, you first need to click on the background layer where we're going to make a selection of our main subject. And we do the selection on the background layer because that's currently the only layer with actual pixels on it. So you can press W or Shift W to get the quick selection tool or grab it from the toolbar. And then click on the background layer to make sure that that's active. And then all you do is paint over the areas that you want to select. And you can also increase or decrease the size of this tool using the square bracket keys. Now you can even release the mouse button and press it again to continue adding to your selection. Or if you select something outside of the main subject area by accident, you can hold down the option key on a Mac or the alt key on a PC and paint to subtract areas from your selection. So let's finish up selecting my main subject here using this method. And I'm going to leave out a part of the subject to show you how you can fix that if you miss a spot by mistake. So with our selection made, now we click on the main focus area layer and we're going to fill it with the paint color that we would have been brushing with if we were using the brush tool method instead. So to do this quickly, press shift delete and change the drop down to foreground color and click OK. Now in this example, you can see that I missed a part of my subject in the selection there. So that's easy to fix. So just click back on the background layer again and continue making your selection of the missed areas. Do that here. And then go back to the main focus area layer, press shift delete again and okay to fill in those remaining areas. Now for this effect, you do want to try and make as accurate a selection as possible for the best results. So okay, with our main focus area painted, we can now open up the actions panel again and then click on step two, set fragment zones and click play. Now the dialog box here tells us to paint just inside of our main subject where we want the shattered effect to be applied. So let's click stop. And this time we'll use the default brush that comes up and very roughly just paint where you want to have some shattered glass effect. And you'll see we're painting on a new fragment zones layer. Okay, so that's good. And lastly, now we click on step three, run fragmented and click play. Now, depending on the speed of your computer, this action may take a few minutes to complete. Okay, and we have our effect completed here. So now we can make some custom refinements to this uh, final image. So let's click on stop here and close the actions panel out of the way. And cool, that looks really good. Okay, so now we have some options that we can use here in the uh, layers palette. So we'll jump on over here. And the first layer at the top here is the tonal adjustments layer group. And we can toggle this open 
and we have three different tonal adjustment layers to affect this image. Now the first one is the custom contrast layer and I'll just toggle the visibility on and off. We can see that we've added a sort of subtle contrast look here to the image which just gives that image a finished look with this type of effect and if you would like you can reduce the opacity down to minimize that slightly leave it cranked up to 100 or if you're very adventurous you can double click on the layer adjustment icon here and make changes to the actual contrast curve itself and close that up now the next two here, we have set them to zero by default. So the first is a brightness and contrast layer. So toggling the visibility doesn't do anything at this point. But if I double click on the layer adjustment icon, you can see we have the brightness and contrast controls here. So I can increase the brightness, decrease the brightness, depending on your image, this will have a different effect as well. Or contrast, same thing. We can increase contrast or decrease contrast as well. So we'll just leave that. It's close to neutral there and close that up. And same thing with the hue saturation. Again, we have no effect applied right now, but we can double click on that to bring up the controls here. Now, first I'll just show you lightness because that's just gonna sort of fade out the image or darken the image as well. We'll leave that close to zero. Saturation is a fun one to play with on this effect. You can increase the saturation or you can actually decrease it and it looks really good in black and white. Okay, we'll bring that to neutral. And another fun one to play with is the hue slider here because this will shift all of the tones of the image. And with this effect, it actually looks pretty cool depending on the image that you're working with as well. So you can see we can change the entire image tone just by shifting that hue slider. So again, we'll just leave that close to neutral and close that up. And that is the tonal adjustment group right there. So we can toggle that closed. And next we have our color options. So if we toggle this group open, there are a lot of default color options that you can choose from here. So the first is a color mood, and this will just apply a color cast over the image. So if we toggle the visibility on, you can see we have this greenish color cast now, and you can change that by double clicking the color swatch and choosing a different color tone altogether. And choose something warm if you like down there. So lots of control here. We can increase the intensity. Click OK if we like that. Or we can toggle that off. And there are also a number of preset options here. So there's a black and white one. We can toggle that on. Again, this one looks pretty cool in black and white. Or we can choose any of the default ones here just by toggling their layer visibilities on and off. And if you find one that you like, but it's a bit too strong like this one, you can just click on the layer to make it active and reduce the opacity down like that. And then you have that effect, but it's not quite as strong. So a lot of options in here to play with. Try them all out and see what works best with your image. So we'll toggle that off for now. We'll just keep it as is and we'll close up that group. Okay, so next we have our fragments layer group and you'll notice here that we have a layer mask applied to the fragments group and it's actually left uh, un unmasked right now. So the reason we put this here is if there's just a little bit too many um, fragments in the image and you wanna reduce those fragments, you can click on the layer mask to make it active and then click B to bring up the brush tool or select it from the side here and choose a nice soft brush right there and then make sure the default color swatch is set to black. And then if you paint with black, painting on the layer mask, so make sure that's active by clicking on it, you can see by painting with black, you're removing some of the shatter, like that. So, but I actually like the look of all those particles, so I'm gonna click uh, con Command Z to undo that. And we'll leave that as is, but know that that option is available if you want to remove some of the fragments. Now let's toggle this group open. And we have two actual groups inside of that group. So the first is our blurred fragments. And if I toggle the visibility of this on and off, you can see that's affecting some of the blurred fragments, which gives it more of a depth. I'm going to zoom in here to 100%, just so you can see how those appear. So the blurred fragments give this sense of depth that they're coming towards the uh, the viewer. 
and you can toggle this group open as well and you'll see you have three different levels of these sort of glass shards that are blurred and you can turn individual groups on and off if you want to or you can reduce their opacities individually or you can do it as a group as well so we'll toggle that closed and then similarly we have the main fragments group which are all of the sharper fragments so toggling that on and off you can see those are all of the sharp fragments that we've got there and if you open that group up you have three different levels of these glass shards as well so we can close those and close up the fragments group now next is our main subject group here and if we toggle that open we have a couple of options. The first is an option to tone just the main subject. So this, as previously when we were looking at these color options before, that tones the entire image. But this one here, this layer, tone main subject, will just actually apply a tone to the subject and not to the whole image, so not to the background. So if we turn the visibility on, you'll see now that the image is toned, or sorry, the subject is toned blue, but we can double click that and change that if we want. Maybe we want him to be more of a warm tone, like that. And as you can see, it affects just the main subject when I toggle that on and off. So you can get creative and see um, for different effects what you would like to do here. So we'll toggle that off for now. And then we have the main subject cutout layer, which we actually don't need to do anything to. But underneath that, we have the original main subject. So if we don't like how the shattered effect has removed parts of the main subject, which it should because <laughs> the subject is shattering, um, we can restore that by clicking on the main subject layer, visibility icon on, and that brings back the whole entire main subject, but it keeps these glass shards. So it doesn't look as realistic, but if you prefer this effect to have the main subject there, you can return the main subject by clicking the visibility on, or you can bring the opacity down a little bit so you can have sort of a partial effect, and that's entirely up to you. But I like the way it looks without this layer on, so we will turn that off. It's pretty cool. And we can toggle that group closed. Okay, and lastly, we have our background layer group. Now what we've got in here is the first layer is a blurred background called the background blurred layer. And what that does is if we toggle that on, I'm going to zoom back out actually so you can see this whole entire image. So this applies a blur to the background. So you can get creative with different effects here. If you're using this for a poster or a flyer of some sort, um, or if you just want to create a different background look, uh, having a blurred background option can be quite handy. And you can even double click on the camera raw smart filter for this layer. And that will bring up some additional options of what you can do with just the background layer here. So if you want, you can really crank up the exposure. You can bring it down, make it darker. That looks pretty cool. Uh, we can maybe adjust the shadows and highlights if we want to add some more contrast, but you can play around with these layers here. For different backgrounds, it's going to have different effects, obviously. And the uh, vibrance is another fun one to play with because you can change the vibrance of just the background layer. So let's actually try that. Click OK and see how that looks. There we go. So that is a pretty cool effect. And that, again, is just on the blurred background layer. So we can turn that off if we don't like it, bring back the original background, or turn it back on, or we can reduce the effect by bringing down the opacity just as we like to do. Okay, so that looks pretty cool. And next we have, so if we want to use the original background, we're gonna to toggle this one off so it's not covering it up. And we have the same camera raw filter available for the original background. So we're gonna double click on that. And again, now we can make changes to the original background. Let's say we wanna go crank up the exposure, click okay. And now that's what we've got, just pure white <laughs> cranked up exposure background there. And you can toggle this uh, effect on and off by changing the smart filter visibility right there. And that completes our fragmented action effect. So thanks again for checking out this action. I think you're going to have a lot of fun creating very interesting images with this particular effect. It works really well on photographs of sports, uh, athletes, or any, any subject that's in motion, especially like fast moving cars, things like that. You're going to have a lot of fun creating different effects with this action. So thank you again and enjoy. 
On behalf of myself and everyone here at Photography BB, thank you for checking out our brand new Artistry 2 Actions for Photoshop. We hope you have hours of fun creating stunning works of art with these, and I personally look forward to seeing everything you create using these actions.